What is the metaverse? It is a question that so many people have shared over this past period, as the metaverse and this new web 3.0 revolution have arrived at the forefront of discussion. The metaverse phrase evokes thoughts of a futuristic virtual world where our lives, all that we do and all of our time will be spent digitally. There have been many definitions and concepts thrown around, trying to capture the essence of what this transition truly is. Today, we will be exploring this topic, unpacking what the metaverse could actually end up being. And we'll work out why there's so much discussion surrounding it all before thinking about what a digital future could look like moving forward. So I guess the best, most reasonable place to start is with a definition, the metaverse. It's a virtual reality space in which users can interact with a digital environment and other users. I know that when you hear the phrase metaverse, you might instantly think about some of these visuals below with people wearing virtual reality glasses, thinking about where the future could be. Maybe they're interacting with games. Maybe they're thinking about it being within a conference, but often we have these futuristic visions. However, the metaverse is definitely much broader than that. And I think what's important to understand as we have this discussion as well is the metaverse is not one individual definition. It's a concept or a theory about where this transition towards our interactions with the online universe heads moving forward. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day. So make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on as well so you won't miss a daily episode. So I guess as we go on this journey, exploring the nuts and the bolts of the metaverse and what it could evolve to become, it makes sense for us to start with someone who really has heralded this new period of focus and attention on the metaverse with Mark Zuckerberg. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. And it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. So that video there was taken from the recent announcement that Facebook, formerly now known as Meta, will be turning their attention to the metaverse and the opportunity that they see to really herald in this new period on the internet. But I guess bringing this back down and distilling it down to the question, what is the metaverse? It's an online virtual world that will incorporate next generation technologies from augmented reality to virtual reality, 3D holograms and many others. And we'll explore some of these technologies later in the video. At the core, the metaverse has been stated to develop, hopefully deepening connections and deepening the level of interactions that we can have on a day to day basis. So as you can see on the right, these are some of the use cases that have been reported for the metaverse from virtual reality, watching online sport or playing games online. Everyone's familiar with Roblox or Minecraft and they are in their own ways, metaversal type games. We've heard about the potential for VR conferences. Maybe we're doing workflows with our employees and colleagues that we're working on, having holograms or visuals about different types of pieces of work that we can interact with in a virtual space. And then of course, maybe there's some virtual reality con concerts or some art galleries. These are just some of the initial discussions about it. But as we know, the metaverse, Web 3.0, this new transition to a new stage of the internet will have many more use cases. Many of them have not even been conceptualized yet. We've heard about spaces to work, to play, to stay in. And of course, these are only going to continue to evolve moving forward as the technology improves and as more eyes and focuses really expand into the metaverse. I think what's interesting as well is that the metaverse translates to a digital economy, which idealistically, aspirationally, it's interoperable. So what that means is that, of course, in many of the spaces that we play or exist within at the moment on Web 2.0, Many of these are discrete and siloed interactions. So your Twitter interactions will be different to your YouTube interactions, will be different to some of the workflows or the spaces that you interact, say on Microsoft Teams for workplaces. However, hopefully, idealistically, the metaverse will be interoperable, which means that you may have a digital avatar that can go from space to space to space. Maybe you have some forms of digital currency that are interoperable across different types of components of the metaverse. Of course, we'll have to wait to see how it plays out, but it will be fascinating. I'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below what you think about all this metaverse chatter, how you're perceiving this transition towards web 3.0 and where do you think it all heads moving forward? And I guess it probably is important for us to have a bit of a thought about definitions here. I know there's a lot of phrases that get thrown around VR, 3D holograms, AR or digital avatars. So really just to help to distill this conversation down, 
A few quick definitions for you. Virtual reality. These are persistent virtual worlds that continue to exist even when you're not playing. I know virtual reality goggles are ones that many people are probably familiar with. And so that's one way to interact with the VR world. Augmented reality or AR on the other side is an enhanced version of the real physical world that combines aspects of real as well as the digital. Probably the best example that many people might be familiar with is Pokemon Go. There was a time, I'm sure if you cast your mind back a few years, where everyone was running around the real physical world, but catching Pokemon in the digital world. But they were really combined together and providing that augmented reality experience. Digital avatars are graphical illustrations of a user or the user's character. Digital avatars are really commonplace in many of the games that we play on the day to day now. But there is the thoughts that potentially our digital avatars will become more and more intersected with the metaverse and could, as we mentioned, have interoperability so that maybe you might just have one digital avatar that can flow freely through different types of worlds. And then 3D holograms, these are probably further down the line. The technology surrounding them definitely needs to continue to be developed over time. But these are 3D projections that exist freely in a space and they're visible without the need for 3D glasses. I'm sure you can think about many of the potential use cases in terms of video conferences, interacting with friends and family. We went from calling them up on the phone to be able to FaceTime them with video. Maybe there's a future where 3D holograms are commonplace and we can have that more uh, deep in connection and interaction with our friends and family or our colleagues through these holograms. And so you might be wondering, okay, these are the different technologies and components that make up the metaverse. But are there ex actually examples of the metaverse in the current place? And what does this really mean for the future moving forward? And so, of course, Facebook have really been leading the line with their transition towards Meta. Microsoft as well, on the corporate front, have been really exploring the opportunities for the metaverse. We know that Facebook in 2014 acquired Oculus, which gives them that further exposure into the metaverse, virtual reality goggles as well, and now Quest 2 has come out. But there are other examples as well. We know that games are often the first leaders in terms of piloting new technologies. Fortnite had a virtual reality concert with Ariana Grande, as you can state. This is where we've seen that real amalgamation of the technology, the gaming world, as well as the real world virtual reality concert as well, which actually had quite a rapid uptake. I'm sure you're familiar with Minecraft, Roblox. These are types of games that have got metaverse tendencies as well. And they've seen users playing in these persistent online worlds and having their avatars really representing them in these worlds. And then Sandbox 2, which has been one of the leading lights. It's a blockchain game, which has really helped to provide users that opportunity to interact with the metaverse world. But it's not the only one. And of course, more games are continuing to develop over this period and will continue over this next decade and beyond. Keen to hear your thoughts. So drop in a comment which ways you've been interacting with the metaverse and what do you think this means for the story and the way that we interact digitally in the coming years. And it's always interesting to reflect on why now? Often there are sometimes individual catalysts or sometimes it's a culmination of a range of catalysts and a confluence of factors that can lead towards digital transitions. There are definitely a few of them in this current state. We've got ultra fast broadband and internet speeds. We now have the capabilities to hold multi-person and large servers as well. We know that immersive technology is being developed like virtual reality headsets, augmented reality goggles, though they still have issues. I'm sure anyone who's worn VR headsets for any extended periods of time knows that can contribute to motion sickness, but this technology continues to be developed and has significant investment going into it. We know that persistent, always on online worlds are becoming more mainstream. We've talked about Minecraft, we've talked about Roblox, we've talked about Fortnite, and these are just a couple of them. But of course, they're becoming more and more persistent as time goes on. It's going to be interesting to see because we know that when the internet first arrived, as you can see from this quote on the right, it started with a series of technological innovations. We had the ability to let computers talk to each other over great distances or the ability to hyperlink from one web page to another. These technical features were the building blocks that were then used to make more abstract structures that are really commonplace on the day to day now. And now this is really what we know the internet for from websites to apps to social networks and everything else that relies on the core elements. So if we look at the seven layers of the metaverse, the infrastructure, that's the core building blocks. The infrastructure continues to be developed and then the human interface for us to be able to interact with the layers of the metaverse from the mobile phone to smart glasses, better technology, wearables, haptic features that will continue to be developed as well. 
We know that decentralization is becoming more and more important and the blockchain is really critical to that. And Web 3.0 is really going to herald this change. But then as we work further up the layers, we start to see that ultimately it ends up with enhanced experiences, enhanced discovery, enhanced connections moving forward, and the opportunities for individuals to really interact at a deeper level with the metaverse. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Underpinning it all, the metaverse's focus is going to be providing a space to be immersed within the experience rather than just looking at it as an observable aspect. And so where does this all head? It is a fascinating question and nobody really has any answer. If you have enjoyed the video so far up to now, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. Let us know your thoughts with a comment. And if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. As we know, the earliest internet is nothing like what we see and experience today. We know that the metaverse really is playing at the intersection of Web 3.0, of VR, or of AR, of the blockchain. If you are interested in Web 3.0, let us know. We can do another video building on this and following up on that at a later stage. We know that the internet has progressed over time from text-based with Web 1.0 really read-only towards, of course, visuals and photos. And now it's progressed to video being that main form of consumption. We're even interacting through that medium at the moment on YouTube. But over time, it does look like the metaverse and this more persistent online environment is going to be a transition and quite an organic, natural transition. Of course, there's a broader question about what does this mean for society as we become more and more integrated with this digital world? Do we lose the real nature of society, of connection, of inhuman connection? That's really outside of the scope of today's video, but it is something that is going to become more and more prevalent in terms of the discussions on that societal lens. I think it is important to reflect and remember that the metaverse is a concept rather than a single definition or technology, and it will continue to evolve over time. Nobody truly knows how, but I did think it was interesting just to reflect on this often quoted quote by Paul Krugman, who was a Nobel Prize winning economist. And he stated just over 20 years ago, so it wasn't that long ago, that by 2005 or so, it will become clear that the internet's impact on the economy has been no greater than the fax machines. In this initial stage, of course, we can see many of these more novel or niche uses for technologies that will enable the metaverse and this web 3.0 transition. But I think it's important to understand that these are the initial pilots. And of course, in the early stages, you see these novel and niche cases and not all of them will flow all the way through. However, these are the building blocks for what will eventually become potentially this web 3.0 and this new digital economy and this new digital world. It's going to be a fascinating time. It will be one to watch. I'm keen to know your thoughts on them all. I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.